During this course we're going to look at lots of quite advanced AJAX topics, things like how to process XML, how to use data in this format called JSON, how to generate JavaScript on the fly and transmit it between web browsers. But to begin with, we'll start with something a lot simpler. Now, if we're going to create an AJAX web page, the first thing we need is a web page. So on the desktop, I'll create a folder called Documents. Now, the Documents folder we're going to use to store all of our code, all of the pages, images, style sheets, and so on. And I'll begin by opening up a text editor. Now, this is BB Edit, but if you're using Windows, you might want to use Notepad++ or Write or Notepad or Emacs. Um, but within the Documents folder, I'm going to create a new file. And the file will be called index.html. Now, this file is going to contain uh, the front page of a website. Everything that we create in this course is going to be for a website for a, for a baseball team called the Springfield Blue Sox. And this is the basis of the of the web page. You can see that already in here we're referring to a, a style sheet and we'll also need to get hold of some images and a few other files. So what I'm going to do is I'll switch back to the documents folder and I'll paste in a couple of folders that contain things like images and style sheets. Now I'll go back to the index.html page and we'll need to put in a, a few little bits of content just to get us started. So because it's going to be the front page of the website I'll begin by putting in a logo at the top of the page and the logo I'm going to use is in a file called logo 990 by 80 which is an image that's 990 pixels wide and 80 pixels high. Okay so if I save that go back to the folder and then open the page you can see this is the start of our application. Um, now on the page itself you can see I've got the logo and at the bottom of the logo we've got this yellow bar. Now the yellow bar we're going to use for some Ajax controls. We're going to put some buttons on that bar and those buttons are going to use JavaScript to control the rest of the web page. And that's the key thing about Ajax. Ajax is about capturing JavaScript events like people clicking buttons and and then using that event to fire off some very clever JavaScript code that in some way will either send information to the server to be stored or perhaps will actually change the appearance of the web page, will actually you know update part of the web page or hide it away or animate it, those kinds of things. That's really the core of what Ajax is. So within the web page we're going to have two sections. Now the first section I've already mentioned and that's the button bar. Now with a lot of Ajax code we have to mark up the page in different ways and actually identify sections and we normally do that with div tags so this is our first div tag that's going to be the button bar now because I've got style sheets and things already created the button bar is actually going to cover that yellow bar on the page now the second part of the page is going to be something called the roster now what's the roster? Well the people that want this web website creating have decided that on the front page of their website what they would like to show is the the lists of the different types of players in the in the Blue Sox team. Now to begin with we'll just have some placeholder text. Um, so if I say um, click on the buttons above to choose a roster. Now a roster is just a list of players and what we're going to have on the front page are a set of buttons across the top that allow a user to the website to see who's currently an infield player or who's currently a pitcher in the Blue Sox team. And those buttons are going to be JavaScript buttons which if someone clicks on say the pitchers button the rest of the web page will suddenly show them who the pitchers are and if they decide to change to the infielders button it will then dynamically change the page to show them all of the infielders. 
So if I save the page, you can now see we've got the, the roster section of the page here with some placeholder text. And now I'll go to the button bar and I'm going to add a button on here which will be a JavaScript button which someone can use to display the pictures. Now this is not going to be a, a form button, we're not going to submit anything uh, with this, we're not actually going to submit the web page or any data, it's going to be purely a JavaScript button. So the type's going to be button and we need to have some text on it so I'll put the word pictures and then because it's a JavaScript button I'm going to attach an event and I'm going to say if anybody clicks on the pictures button what's going to happen is it's going to call some magical new function that we're about to create called change roster and what change roster will do is it will display all of the pictures in the Blue Sox team now we're not going to store the information for the pictures in this web page we're going to store it in a separate file and that file is going to be called pictures.html okay so I'll save that now if I go back to the web page click refresh you can see the style sheets have actually lined up that button quite nicely onto the button bar but if I click on it of course nothing currently happens well why is that well it's because we haven't created this function and also we haven't created this external file called pictures.html and I think that's where we need to start next. So we've got the basics of our web page in place but now we've got some code to write and some extra data to provide and if you remember what's going to happen is on the page when someone clicks on this button here the text here that currently says click on the buttons above to choose a roster will be dynamically replaced using Ajax and it will become a table of information showing all of the pictures on the Blue Sox team. Now to do this we referred to an external file called pictures.html. Now I'm going to create that file now. The name pictures.html probably makes you think that this is going to be a web page and in a sense it is but it's not really a full web page it's just a page fragment if you can see I've pasted the the code in here and it's just an HTML table but we've not got a header section we've not got a body we've just got part of a web page but if I save that file and if I go back to the folder and open up pictures.html you can see it actually opens up as if it's a web page but remember it's not a whole web page it's just a page fragment and what we're going to do is we're going to use this page fragment we're going to use all of the text in the pictures.html file and we're going to take that text and using Ajax we're going to dynamically replace the contents of this div uh, here called roster okay now the thing that's going to work that magic the piece of JavaScript that's going to do that Ajax coding for us is this function here called change roster now that doesn't exist yet and that's what we're going to write next so what's going to be in this change roster function well let's begin by creating it I'll add a script section at the top of the page inside the head where it'll be kind of invisible to anyone that looks at the web page and I'll create the function now remember it's called change roster and it's going to take a single parameter now the value of that parameter is pictures.html but I'll call that URL now it's obviously not going to be a full URL at the moment because we're just working off the hard disk uh, but for now I'll call it a URL and inside the function we now need to write the code that's going to go and find the contents of the pictures.html file and then use that text to replace the contents of this div. Now then we've got a problem because that means in a way that the we need to write some code that's going to make a request. It needs to say give me the contents of a file called pictures.html but how can we do that because normally 
if someone makes a request like if you click on a link or you type in a URL to an address bar in a browser and click return the browser will make the request for you and the browser will switch to a new page but we don't want to switch to a new page we want to stay on the index.html on the front page of the site and we want JavaScript to make a secret behind the scenes request and that's really what the the key principle of Ajax is it's using JavaScript to make secret requests to the server on our behalf while we stay on the same page so if you go to Google Mail while you're looking at the page behind the scenes the JavaScript is, is very frequently and very quietly going off to the Gmail server and saying are there any new email messages and when there are it then dynamically updates the web page to show you that a new email has arrived and we want to do the same thing here we want to make a secret behind the scenes request to get the contents of the pictures.html file and use it to update this div now how do we do that well the most important javascript object in ajax is a thing called the xml http request now that's a very long name so it's normally called the xhr and we create a new xhr by saying new xml http request now this is going to be the object that allows us to make these private requests to the server and the way we say exactly how to make the request is by using the open method of the xhr and in the open method we'll say that we want to get the contents of the file that we're referring to with the URL variable which if you remember is the pictures.html file and the third parameter is whether or not we want this uh, request to run in the background whether we want it to run asynchronously and to begin with we don't we'll make what's called a synchronous request which means we'll make the request we'll ask for the contents of pictures.html and we'll wait until we get the contents back and that means that we need to put the word false now we've created and configured the request we need to send it now sending the request means that we'll go and read the pictures.html file either from the disk or if this is running on a server it'll read it from the web server and it'll wait until it's read the entire contents of that file and then we can deal with the response now the response is something that we need to look at next it's going to be the the response text so if I save this file now and go back to the web page if I click refresh and then click the pictures button at the moment we're not actually doing anything behind the scenes we're actually reading the text of the pictures file but we're not actually updating the web page that's what we'll do next so we've got some code that when we click on a button on the page is making a request to read the contents of this file called pictures.html now we need to take the response of that request now the response is just all of the text that's contained in pictures.html we need to take that response text and paste it at this point in the page now if we look back at the HTML code that means we'll take the contents of pictures.html which will be our response text and we'll put that response text down here now a useful thing to do at this stage is just to check that our Ajax request is working and one way we can do that is by creating a JavaScript alert which will pop up a message box and inside the message box will display the text of the response now remember the text of the response should be the contents of this external file pictures.html and we can get the response text by saying xhr dot response text now if I save that go back to the web page click refresh when I click on this button what we should get is the contents of this file and it should display them in a in an alert box so let's see if it works and there it is all of the text from this external file has been fetched behind the scenes by Ajax and is being displayed inside that alert box 
but of course we don't want to display the the text there what we want to do is to use that HTML to replace this this text here so if I go back to the HTML and the first thing I'll need to do is get a reference to the div that we're going to modify now the div has got an ID attribute of it on it of roster so what I'll do is create a new JavaScript variable called roster and the roster variable will refer to the roster div and I can get a reference to the roster div by saying document dot get element by ID and then in here I can give the the ID of that div which is roster okay so roster now refers to this div now I need to replace the contents of the roster div with the text from the XHR response and I can do that like this roster dot inner HTML now inner HTML means the contents of the div and I'm going to set the contents of the div equal to the response text and the response text should refer to all of the text inside the pictures.html file so that means that when someone clicks on the button it will call the change roster function passing it the name pictures.html the change roster function will create an Ajax request it'll send the request it will then look for the roster div and it'll replace the contents of the roster div with the contents of the pictures.html file so I'll save this I'll go back to the browser and if I refresh the page now when I click on the pictures button you can see it's actually taken the contents of pictures.html and pasted it into that main roster div on the web page. Okay, what's next? Now there's something for you to do. So far, we've got a web page which, when it's first loaded, shows some placeholder text and a button marked pictures. When you click on the button, the placeholder text is replaced with the contents of an external file called pictures.html. Now you need to do the same thing, but instead of for the pictures on the Blue, to Blue Sox team, you need to do it for the infielders on the Blue Sox team. Now there's a separate file containing that information, and it's called infielders.html. And that's the text that's the table of the infielders. Now if I save that and go back to our main index.html page you need to modify this page to add a second button that will display the infielders when it's clicked. So how did you do? Remember we need to create a second button so what I'm going to do is go down into the button bar div and I'll copy and paste the existing the existing button for the pictures and I'll change the value so that we get some new text and I'll say infielders now in the change roster the parameter that we pass there is the name of the file containing our new content so if I replace pictures.html with infielders.html which if you remember is the new file we've been given if we now go back to the web page and click refresh we begin with just the placeholder text that we saw to begin with if I click on pictures as before it shows us the pictures on the team but now if I click on infielders we can see the infielders on the blue socks now this all seems to be going quite well but there's still a problem and that problem is Internet Explorer So it might look like our application's finished. After all, if we go along to the web page, if we click on pictures, it shows us the pictures. If we click on infielders, it 
clicks it shows us the infielders and we can switch quite happily between the two and the Ajax requests are going off and, and doing all of the work behind the scenes. However, there's a problem. If we have a look at an old browser like Internet Explorer 6, when we first go to the page it looks exactly the same. But if I was to click on the pictures button nothing happens and interestingly down in the bottom left hand corner you can see that we've got uh, a JavaScript error and what it's saying is it's never heard of this thing called XML HTTP request. Now this is kind of ironic because it was really Microsoft who first invented the idea of the XML HTTP request but the JavaScript in older versions of Internet Explorer uh, prior to Internet Explorer 8 doesn't allow you to use the XML HTTP request object in the same way. You need to kind of go through a few hoops. You need to write some slightly more convoluted code in order for Internet Explorer 6 to work. So if I go back to the application, the issue is that the XML HTTP request object is unknown to the JavaScript engine inside Internet Explorer 6. Fortunately, there is a very well known fix for this. And what we need to do is, if there is no existing XML HTTP request object, we can create our own. And I'll do that with this piece of code. Now it looks quite complicated, but what it's doing is actually relatively straightforward. The first line of code is saying, if you have never heard of the XML HTTP request, then do the following. And in here, we are telling JavaScript exactly what we mean by the XML HTTP request. And we're creating it as a, as a new kind of class, a new kind of function. And we'll get this new function to try the different types of implementation of XML HTTP request, which are in the various types of Internet Explorer. So confusingly, in some versions, it's called the MS XML 2 HTTP 6.0. In others, it's called XML HTTP 3.0 and so on. And what this, this code will do is try all of the different implementations of XML HTTP request inside, X, in, inside Internet Explorer until it finds one that exists and then it will use that object. So this piece of code here, in effect, implements an XML HTTP request if there isn't one already inside the browser. So if I save this page and then switch back to Windows and hit refresh, again it starts as it did before by showing us the two buttons and if I click on the pictures button now it works and if I click on infielders it switches the content back between the two. Now this piece of code is actually fairly complicated to understand but the good news is that you'll probably just use exactly the same piece of code whenever you're creating a new page. Okay now we've got the code working it's time to think a little bit deeper about exactly what's gone on here.